Hey everybody, we haven't posted to this feed in a while because as you may know, uh, we have transitioned away from the Tiny Disc podcast and right now we've started actually a new podcast on another feed. It's called Tadaima, a Terrace House podcast. And so we are posting the first three episodes from our new show here to this feed just to help you guys kind of on board and come with us to the next show we're doing. Again, that's called Tadaima, a Terrace House podcast. It's spelled T-A-D-A-I-M-A. And so trust me, I had to practice that a couple times. But anyways, we uh, appreciate you guys and we're looking forward to you joining us on our next venture here. And for for those that are interested and for those that are not interested, we thank you very much for all of your support for the Tiny Disc Podcast. And we will see you on the other side. Thanks so much. Everybody. Welcome to Tadaima, a Terrace House podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpanito, and I'm joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Hey, uh. Jack Zapata. Yodoshai Masse, everybody. Hello. And Colin Sparling. I've switched from to another set of 20 songs from 12 years ago. Wow. <laughs> so quickly. So soon. Within 30 minutes. Within, within, within 30 minutes. Yeah, it- so, I mean, you just you gotta have that rotation, but it's like it's like that meme of of Lisa from uh, from The Simpsons where she's like, "Yeah, give me that good, good in the coffee cup," and it's like the same to- set, ten songs from. See, you can't be ago. dropping these kind of things without like throwing up a playlist. Well, I mean, just, should I make a playlist? It just be twenty songs, but every song is just "Rollin'" by Limp Bizkit. Yeah, <laughs> accurate. But the air raid vehicle version, so it's like the hardcore rap version <laughs> with Red Man and Method Man. Yeah, same. Yeah. All right, that that's about the extent of my Limp Bizkit knowledge. So let's talk about and something like else. I said. Yeah, so it's, they're just somebody's like, okay, I'm gonna give this a second chance, and then here we talk about Limp Bizkit again. <laughs> yeah, it's like, nope, nope. Over. I mean, uh, there's there's strike, a very big two. Limp Bizkit arc within opening new doors, that's as true. everyone knows. That's Dude, true. that would be so. If if I would freak out if someone walked on to Terrace House wearing a Limp Bizkit shirt. <laughs> Could you imagine? I would lose it. I'm not even joking, though. Like, some of the music sounds a little like Limp Bizkit B-sides. What if they went to a Limp Bizkit concert? Okay, this is way too much Limp Bizkit. Okay, I don't know, man. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so this is a show about Terrace House. A great Japanese... Yeah, yes. it's a great Japanese reality TV show you can find on Netflix, and this is the second episode that we're publishing on the same day, where we're kind of giving you a primer of what terrace house is and some kind of hidden behind the scenes kind of insights into what the show is all about and i think we're going to kick things off with kind of just a quick little recap of the history of terrace house because i think like a majority of people worldwide have only seen this through uh netflix probably i mean that, that speaks for all four of us right yes yeah yeah and yeah I think like some people might not even know there was a whole nother season before Netflix came onto the scene and it's like 98 episodes long. Yeah. And, and if you watch uh, boys and girls in the city, they, you can catch references to the previous season too. And you're like, <clears throat> what are they talking about? <laughs> when the commentators are speaking, you mean, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. yeah. When the commentators are speaking, they make references to characters that were only in the original 90, Eight episodes. God, that's a lot of episodes. Yeah, that's a lot of show. <laughs> well, and and not only that, but they have people from the first season recur in future ones. Like in Boys and Girls in the City, Sana shows back up Sana-san. for whatever reason. Sana san. Sana san. Sana. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Infamous. <laughs> and she like helps get the ball rolling and create more drama, which is great, I guess. Um, but you wouldn't like if you've only seen Netflix via Japan or. You've only seen Terrace House via Netflix. There we go. That's the <laughs> You've only seen Netflix via Japan. <laughs> only Netflix in Japan. Now, if you've only seen Terrace House on Netflix, then you would have no idea who Sena is. And you would also have no idea that not only was it 98 episodes, but then they were like, let's finish with a movie. Right. They're asking, I, still, it, I actually, I'm really curious. I actually don't know the story on the movie, though. I'm a did little it get black. released in theaters? Like a legit, like... I'm going to buy a, mo- a ticket to the Terrace House movie and buy some popcorn. I don't believe so, no. I think it no, was okay. aired yeah, on TV. Gotcha. Um, 
but what the movie was was kind of like a greatest hits in a way that was supposed to kind of cap off this first epic two-year season of Terrace Oh, House. so it was basically kind of like an OVA, I guess. They called it Closing Door. Yeah. Oh, just one to, door. To clarify what Colin said, too, a lot of Japanese shows will kind of like close with a movie or several movies to kind mm. of like give you that last look at that show. And sometimes it's not even related to to necessarily what was happening last in the show it's just kind of a like final um condensing of everything that you watched interesting so that first season was just called boys and girls next door not to be confused within the city um and it took place in shonan which is like a 40 minute drive from tokyo just south of it so it's actually like really close to you know the, one of the biggest cities in japan and it's kind of a surfing city like there's a lot of good places to surf around there because it's right on the coast. Um, and it aired weekly only on Fuji TV until it ended. And aside from it not being like published to the Western audience, it's still the exact same show. Like the same panelists, the same concept, the same, you know, like feeling of watching it. It just wasn't brought over to the West. Hmm. Not any official capacity, anyway. Do you kn do we know if there were English subtitles made? I believe there are not official English subtitles made out there on the internet. Fan titles, some would say. Okay, um, got it. And yeah, I'm sure there's fans out there. The favorite fact I've learned about this first season is: Do you guys want to take a guess at what the intro song is? I think I know, so I I I will abstain. Oh yeah, God, I don't yeah. actually know this. I do know this. Okay, Colin, you need you, all eyes on you, buddy. <laughs> uh, okay, hit me. What is it? I don't know. We are never ever getting back together <laughs> by Taylor Swift. Really? Really? No, we don't have the licensing for that. You can't sing it. Oh no! Really? <laughs> Just <laughs> well, that real. single. That's hundred yeah, percent real. Well, yeah. That's strange. That's every funny. Like every season of Terrace House in Japan has a Taylor Swift intro. <laughs> I really wonder why that is, and then why is it not? In the international version, why is it's that not be, also imported? It's got to be licensing, right? It's got to be a guess. Taylor Swift song costs way more to you know have on a, on a show in North America than it would in Japan, just by the audience, and and that's kind of like why fun weird fact. Like if you ever notice, there is a disproportionate amount of Asian and Chinese students to driving Maseratis in college is because I actually saw this video, this lecture, actually a Penn State lecture called Asian Cool on YouTube is crazy. Anyways, it's because Maseratis cost like 10 times less in America than they do in Japan. So even though it's still a sixty, seventy thousand dollar car, it's way more in China if you wanted to buy a Maserati. So it seems like a huge bargain when you move to America. I did not know as that. As an international student. So yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah, okay. That's pretty I've cool. I've seen quite a few Maseratis. Yeah, a lot of Asians driving Maseratis. Specifically on Maseratis. Campuses. Yes. Yeah, there's yes. a dealership right near where you work, right, Colin? Yes. Yes, yeah. there is. All yeah, right. about a couple blocks away, a, little, a couple minute walk, and you can be standing in front of several Maseratis and Porsches. <laughs> Yikes. Um, and then we move on to Boys and Girls in the City. Now, this is where Netflix joins the crew. And to my understanding, I don't think Fuji TV had renewed Terrace House. Like, we wouldn't gotcha. have Terrace House without Netflix. Let, let me you, put this Netflix. on the table real quick before we jump into this. So when when we bring up Fuji TV, um, and you can elaborate on this for me, Robert. Um, so like w w oftentimes when you hear about media that comes out of Japan, it's usually associated with the name Fuji TV. Mm. Um, and so could you give a little background on like Fuji TV too as well? Because they're kind of like all encompassing when it comes to a lot of ent entertainment there. Right. So Fuji TV is a lot like the BBC in the UK, if you're familiar with that. So it's not just one channel. There's kind of a conglomerate of channels under the Fuji TV brand. Mm -hmm. And each channel is kind of dedicated to a certain niche. Like there's a variety in like variety TV and sports channel. There's one dedicated to like anime essentially, but nonetheless, like a lot of TV in Japan is made or is published through, or is at least on a Fuji TV channel. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So no idea if that was named after the mountain or not. Can't confirm that. But <laughs> I mean, like another uh, successful export was Iron Chef was a Fuji TV show. And oh, really? That's that's huge here too. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't know Iron Chef was Fuji TV. That's interesting. 
and in the anime sphere like uh dragon ball super one piece yeah naruto they all aired on fuji tv they just seem like a massive conglomerate like you said kind of yeah. like clear channel in the states yeah but rarely do you ever hear like this this show is sponsored by clear channel or brought to mm-hmm. you by you know right yeah so this is a huge team up right between yeah, like two powerhouses like, it, it, it sounds like the equivalent of like say viacom here viacom owns a shit ton here in the u.s Maybe. yeah yeah um so yeah netflix is on the scene now they're like hey we think we think that like this show terrace house could be something more than just a japanese reality tv show and I didn't know this until I did some research, but apparently, like, so you know how it comes out weekly in Netflix Japan, right? Along with on right. Fuji TV. It comes out a full month before on Netflix Japan than when it airs on Fuji TV. Oh, wow. Oh, really? So yeah. Netflix is the first drop. Netflix is the very, Netflix Japan specifically is the very first place you can watch these episodes. Interesting. Yeah. That is. I guess, I'm, like, is that just because it's now expected like that's part of the deal and like that's an easier way to consume it versus just like because netflix put in the money it. yeah yeah maybe well, so i don't know how true this would be in japan but i know in my time in korea there's like you know your commute to work is a big thing and since public transportation is so big more often than not you're just sitting there on the bus or on the train playing with your phone rather than like actively at the wheel driving to work Mm-hmm. So that's like a full hour or two of your day where you're just sitting there on your phone and watch Terrace House. Yeah, watch Terrace House or watch whatever you want to watch on Netflix or you know, Hulu or whatever. Mm-hmm. Damn, you streaming all that data? Stream all that video on your data? That'd they, be awful. they provide like modems and stuff. Oh, uh, do they have Wi Fi on the trains? On trains. Yes. Not oh, on yeah. buses. Whoa. At least not when I was there in Korea, but on trains they do. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that public infrastructure, though. <laughs> if only America had that, right? <sighs> <laughs> uh, so, Boys and Girl in the City ran for 46 episodes, a little over a year. And wow. then, uh, like, just a week later in Netflix Japan, you could have started watching Aloha State, which I didn't realize that because, I don't know, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like there was a long wait between, like, Aloha State and opening new doors. I can't speak to that because when I started the show, like my interest in the show and binging it, they were both already on Netflix, so I didn't really have to wait too much. Right. I, mm, yeah, there was definitely like a bit of a wait. I don't remember it being like excessively long though. Mm. I don't remember exactly. It was at least a couple months. Right. It was a few months. Yeah. So what made Aloha State interesting, it was the first time that Terrace House went overseas right mm-hmm. they filmed that in hawaii which makes sense because hawaii does actually have a pretty big japanese population it's kind of like the best place to be japanese american essentially uh and that whole series ran for 36 episodes still under the netflix banner which i think is the only way terrace house is going to happen moving forward from the looks of it right um and then uh what's funny about aloha state is it was originally only slated for 24 episodes and then they extended it to 36, which I think if because yeah. when we were watching it, they did mention that on the show. Mm-hmm. And right. I, I can't point any fingers, but if I had to guess, maybe that was Netflix kind of like hesitating on whether this would be popular. Sure. And then it like started catching, you know, like this cult status pretty slowly, but surely. Yeah. Yeah, so just they, because it was 96 episodes in Japan doesn't mean they can just, oh, we're just going to buy 96 more, you know, in, in right. Hawaii. So th- that makes sense, I guess. Exactly. You look at it that way. Yeah. And, and then here, 2017, or uh, yeah, in 2017, they started opening new doors at the end of the year. So basically all of 2018 has been set here in Kaduizawa. It's the season we're following now. It's the season we're going to start following next week, set in the small little town of 20,000 people. And it's like a two and a half hour drive away from Tokyo. It's on a mountain. I, I equate it to like Japanese Aspen. It's mm-hmm. like right smack in the middle of, um, you know, the island. It's in Nagano Prefecture. It's very much um, sorted to like outdoor and indoor sports. It's actually the only city that has hosted both the summer and the winter Olympics. Really? Yeah. Wow. Fun facts. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a big summer destination for people living in Tokyo. Like it's a huge tourist industry going on in Karawizawa. Um and another fun fact geographically it's at the foot of a volcano that was active in 2015 
Oh, I'm freaky. Rip. God. Talk so about maybe, what, drama. Have like an eruption <laughs> in the middle of the show. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Dude, that'd be wild. Uh, yeah. So, well, um, and on the on the note of episode count, too. So we're there's been 32 episodes, right? Opening new doors released here in the U.S. Yep. So and, far. And so there is about to be eight more released. So we're going to be at 40 episodes come some point in December here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. So it's already doing, I guess, better than Aloha State. You One could assume. Yeah, and I think they have said that they're going to be filming up through January 2019, which means at least oh. another part after part five. Oh, they've already committed to that? Yeah. Hey, January wow. 20, like, that's a while. Yeah, it's about a full yeah. year. Yeah, so that's, I mean, two more parts after part five. It sounds like at least. I would say at least one. They might, like, wait yeah. till they have all of the rest of them and just release part six as, like, one big part like they did with Aloha State. Oh but, yeah, that's yeah. true. Ooh, we'll see yeah. what happens. It's hard because Terrace House isn't like Marvel where it's like we're going to keep pushing out movies. You have the schedule up until like 2025. Mm-hmm. Whereas cuz especially like Netflix doesn't release any of its viewer data, so we don't actually know like how many people are solidly like watching this. But we know a lot of people are because here we are talking about it. Yeah, we can say a lot of people are at least talking about it online, but right, and it's hasn't really like up the, in the air. Hasn't the Netflix Japan like communications coordinator gone on record saying that um, the show is performing better than they expected with an international audience? Yes. 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 Um, yeah. I believe his name is. Oh, I lost it. But um, essentially, it's been confirmed that it's like surprising how much eagerness there has been outside of Japan. Um, And they're happy about that because it's a glimpse into modern Japanese culture. And maybe it's, you know, distracting away from stereotypes that might be peddled by anime. Mm. I love anime, but, you know, it's (laughs) it's definitely not what's happening exactly. But it has uh, exceeded expectations for international viewership. And, yeah. and they'll say that on the show too, and that's one of my favorite parts about the show is when the commentators talk about their exploits around the country, around the globe, and where pe- their people are recognizing them. Sometimes it results in them getting on planes sooner than they should be. Um, but yeah, there's a. It's definitely catching on. We have far beyond the reaches of Japan, far beyond the reaches of of Asia overall. And like I said, it's only growing in popularity uh, as as the episodes continue. Yeah. And I, I read a interesting article actually recently. And talked about like well what what is it you know we're talking about the target audience like who is watching this like what is really kind of people's anchor is it coming to the, back to the show and as someone who gets uh you know definitely kind of grew up <clears throat> uh, uh, let me how do i say this a lot of my family is from the um uh, the Pacific Islands, right? And so I don't know a lot about that area, but whenever there is anything about Guam or even Hawaii to a certain extent, like on TV, I, it already like catches my interest a little bit more than anything else, right? Than like Maine or like Nantucket or something like that, right? Just because like, oh, I want to learn about, you know, my culture, like where I'm from. And that's what this article was saying was that a huge percentage, they, they're they speculating of the audience watching Terrace House are Asian Americans actually like looking to know more about the homeland. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same reason for me. We're like, I'm from that area, and watching the show only reminds me of like back home, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to kind of clarify an earlier point, it was Kata Sakamoto, content manager at Netflix Japan, who said that like they're surprised at how well the show is doing internationally. And it's a shame that we don't really get like Netflix numbers because back when it was only on Fuji TV, I think that they were saying on average you get about uh like four to five percent of all households watching terrace house on average wow and then episode 76 i believe was the highest viewed uh episode or 74 was the highest viewed episode with nearly 10 percent of all japanese households who have fuji tv watching that episode quick question do we have like data like are they watching the show essentially in real time meaning like are they watching you know last week's events that happened like does it get edited and aired that quickly or is there a little bit more of a turn over time that i am not sure i I think i remember hearing this and i need to research it to be absolutely sure but there's like at least a month or two 
Okay. Of delay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because I feel like to, if you just think about it logistically too, so every episode it like covers an entire week. So you'd have to think that they're filming footage for an entire week at a time and they have to edit through that entire week of footage for every single episode. So yeah. that definitely is going, I mean, editing through a week's worth of footage is going to take a serious amount of time. And I don't know if they're like, I, I don't know if they're constantly keeping the cameras on even while they sleep or anything like that, <laughs> but that would be a lot of footage to go through. You get like a paranormal activity episode where someone just like stands for three hours be, staring at someone some else. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I mean, the only time you ever get footage of people sleeping uh, usually is when they're sleeping really late into the day and they're like accenting that, right? Mm-hmm. They're just like, oh yeah, this person's sleeping late in the day and it's time for them to get up. But it's never usually like the weird thing that you see in a lot of reality shows where it's literally like a night vision camera of them sleeping. Yeah. Like it's or, like, oh. two people hooking up with each other and it's uh. really weird. Yeah, yeah, that's that a little too be, invasive for me. Yeah. That would be weird. It yeah. that's that's the thing about the show. Like, even though we are literally watching these people's lives, it doesn't feel invasive. Like the cameras feel naturally placed, and you know, I think arguably sometimes to the point that there maybe there are things that are staged, like certain conversations or like placements of people, because you won't be able to get those kind of camera angles without having known like, oh, you're going to sit there. Okay. So when you sit there, can you move over a little bit so that we can get like your yeah. shoulder in frame as you're talking to someone else? But and to that point yeah. real quick, Santa also has her chair right at the table. I, yeah. Like this is where I sit. Cause this is my angle. This is where I tell my plastic surgeon that I'm going to sit so he can do my nose. No, just kidding. But essentially that's where she feels like is her best side is showcased. The yeah. They definitely right break the, the fourth wall a little bit. Too. Well, especially Santa. Um, and and you can definitely tell like they had some sort of, if not being actively told where to sit, at least some sort of training as to like okay, these are the areas where you're going to be in shot during these certain parts. And you definitely, at least, I don't get the sense that in a lot of parts that there's an active camera crew. It seems like a lot of just placed cameras that are just always running. I'm sure there's people that come into the house to like you know to get the SD cards out, hit, you know, get the footage and blah blah blah. Yeah. Other than that, like it's it's almost always a consistent like camera angle, right? As if the cameras were set up. Yeah. And so, you know what I mean? So it doesn't it seem like it's constantly changing like a camera crew would be. Yeah, cuz even as I said like it doesn't feel invasive. I mean, there's like right. cameras set up in like fairly intimate places like the yeah. bath. Literally, like yeah. I've seen I I saw butts. Yeah, you there's can see butts. Butts explicit in house. man butt. A, a pair of butts sometimes. Two butts. Multiple butts. Yeah. Some yeah. gross man Several butt. butts. It's a thing. <laughs> and I mean, and that's, you know, maybe, you know, in Japan, that's not as big of a deal. Um, I feel like. Yeah, but it, it definitely, if it was on TV here, it would be blurred. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. So that's actually. It would be edited out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually something I kind of want to hone in on, too, is that, like, this is a show that Terrace House is a show that's a good window into a whole new culture for a lot of, you know, Americans. Right. And that's actually something that's true. N- uh, nudity isn't as big a deal in Asian cultures. Like where, when they bathe together completely naked, that's a sign of like kinship or like, hey, you're someone I trust and like I want to be friend. Let's bathe together naked. Whereas here <laughs> in America, if like, you know, if you heard about two guys who bathe together, you'd probably <laughs> assume they're homosexual or at least bi. And yeah. Some kind of fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely hope don't have much like a community onsen here, mm. like in, no. in America, which is like a community bath in in uh, Japan. Uh, I mean, the closest you're gonna get is a fucking gym locker room shower. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like that's as close as you're gonna get. And, those and even are, then, yeah, pretty partitioned off. Right. Exactly. And even like. Even as someone like I've played team sports before and the sh- hitting the showers is a thing. Yeah. But even then, it's like people get in and they want to get the fuck out as soon as possible. Like do your shit. <laughs> All yeah. business. Yeah. Not yeah, hang out, like, it's... drink a beer. Right. <laughs> talk to each shower, other. Shower. Look each other you're in the eye. You're not the shower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Maintain eye contact with me. It's like scrub. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. I mean, don't you forget about going to a community bath together. It's not a thing here. Mm-hmm. But maybe it should be, guys. Let's start it. Yep. Maybe do it, oh, Jack. Like, together, you organize it. <laughs> you guys share a bathroom. Go for it. Let's know. I wonder. Goes. I wonder. I if there was anywhere in America 
that you could do that, I feel like Seattle would be one of those places. So maybe, maybe it would be here. Hey, hey do no. a social experiment. Start that. Yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. podcast from the shower together, guys, please? Oh my God. No, Next audio episode. Would be, from the shower. <laughs> audio would this be is so Sadaima. bad. Reverb everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's something I kind of appreciate seeing especially with the context i feel like a lot of people take a lot of what they know from japan and it's like from things that are very much blown out of proportion like anime um whereas terrace house is much more the everyday little bits of like modern japanese life um and that includes like men are allowed to be a lot more open with their emotions and kind of touchy-feely with each other like there's like um you know not to to spoil anything but like takayuki and uh yudai you know they they shared that bath together and like they cried almost in each other's arms and it was just like you know not necessarily like the moment but it didn't feel like then they were like oh we gotta we gotta pull ourselves together now it's like they're allowed to be yeah, and it's it's just sad that here in America, you kind of are conditioned from a very young age where, like, crying is a girl thing. Yeah. Boys don't cry. Suck it up. You know? And it's like, yeah. Repress those emotions with yeah, all that. Now we're getting into the, exactly. Now we're getting into the whole problem with hyper-masculinity, which is definitely an ongoing issue, but it's, yeah. it's not so much... It's definitely something that's not evident on this show in particular. Like, you're never, you're never going to see a guy that's, like, afraid to cry or, or people on this show in general that are afraid to show their emotions. Right. But, I, I mean, I think that just comes from the kind of society Japan is. Japan's a very collectivist society compared to America's definitely very individualist society where it's all about yeah, me. Yeah, it's like it's like yeah, I don't fuck with you, you don't fuck with me. Okay, we're good. Yeah. That's not how it is in Japan at all times. Yeah. No, yeah, it's very much the group before all else. I mean, like there's a Japanese proverb, you know, the nail that sticks up is the one that gets hammered down. It's like you're wanting to not cause conflict and, you know, jive with the group vibe and when there are people that don't on terrace house it's very evident very quickly yeah i can only think of a handful of times where it was like "Woo, that's different that's a new that's and a yikes that, dog that's not going well right now but you do notice it for sure um so i think that should wrap us up for this today's episode it's been about your history of Terrace House and the things that are like insights into Japan. So the next episode that's coming after this, we're going to do a deep dive into those six strangers that sit on the couch and joke about the people in the house. I'm talking about the panelists and we're going to help you understand who they are, what they're about, why they're there. Why do we even care that there's a panel on Terrace House? Uh, so we're going to dive into it. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, feel free to leave us an iTunes review. It'd mean way more than you know. And until the next time, this has been Tadaima. Thanks for listening. Email us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. Follow us on Instagram at Tadimagram, on Twitter at Tadima Pod, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube at Tadima, a Terrace House podcast.